So now we will understand about the logical standby. So let me just log into this one. Okay, let us start. So guys, to understand logical standby, the one most important point in physical standby is the both primary and standby are same as block by block. What is the meaning of this exactly same as block by block? The records on primary server, let's say you have a primary database. If you have a table, we know that every table has records and inside the records, there is a hidden column which is known as row ID. You can always query row ID like select row ID from whatever your table name is. What is this row ID? Row ID is the physical storage location of that row on the desk. On a physical standby, the physical standby, what happens is the redos are applied on to the physical standby and the main benefit of this process is your row IDs will be exactly same even when you open the physical standby. So if there is an environment where your code or your application team is using row ID inside their code, even after the failover or switchover happens to physical standby, the code will still be valid because it will be referring to the same records inside the table as the row IDs are always same. So block by block, it's there is no difference inside the database because it is exactly same. The changes that are made inside the block on primary, the same exact same block is always changed on physical standby. And due to this reason, physical standby is the preferred choice as a standby database when compared to your snapshot or logical standby right and also active data guard so physical standby like in most of the environments you will always find a physical standby so what is the deal with this logical standby with the logical standby okay we need to understand a couple of stuff so from primary the redo will be transported to the standby on the standby the redo will not be applied directly the redo what happens is okay let me redo from the redo that is coming from the primary we have couple of background processes inside logical standby which will be dealing in some time but let me give you an overview from the redo these statements are recreated let's take if you issue the command insert into xyz or whatever your table and then values are this statement will be regenerated over here it will recreate insert into xyz and once this statement is created this statement is executed against this database so when we say this statement will be executed all this insert update delete and all other statements can only be run when your database is in open mode right a physical standby is an is in a closed state or sorry mount mount mode but a logical standby database is in open mode now why it is open and all we are going to learn about it but for now from primary whatever your redo is coming it is converted into the respective sql statements and these sql statements are executed against this database in this case what happens is like normally how the database performs an insert it will choose a different block it might choose a different block from the disk and the row id will be different and this is the reason the logical standby is less preferred one when compared to the physical standby so there are some reasons why logical standby is less preferred and what are the benefits of logical standby those also stuff we are going to learn see because the logical standby is open the beauty is the physical standby the problem is you have to have a dedicated server which you cannot use until unless you have purchased an active data guard license right 
So if you have an active data card license, you can at least open the physical standby and you can allow the reporting team to connect to this server. So active data card license is a cost on the pocket. It will burn your pocket. What is the workaround? The best workaround is because the logical standby is in open mode. You don't need a license for the logical standby. You can still ask your reporting team to connect to this server and query the tables which belong to the primary server. So this way what happens is you are saving money on your pocket and you are using a logical standby in open mode where your reporting team is working. Now there is one more big benefit of logical standby which I'll show you. So for this guys we have this primary server. We have this active data guard. All right, in this primary and active data guard configuration, the problem is there is a constant recovery. MRP will be running. Okay, MRP will be running in the back end. But in this active data guard, only the reporting, reporting team can connect and they can run select queries. Right. With this, again, it's not like a pure usage of the server. You're just selecting the data. And in case of a failover or switch over, of course, you can perform the failover and switch over. All right. But with logical standby, the beauty is this is more important. Inside logical standby, see, of course, you have the LSP process, logical standby process. This process, if it is running, that means it's a logical standby. If MRP is running, that means it's a physical standby. So LSP process will be receiving the redo data. It will convert it into SQL statements and run against this database. Perfect, right? Because this is in open mode, then the, you can ask your reporting team to connect to this database. Perfect. This is fine. And this is the biggest benefit because it's in open mode. You as a DBA can use this database as a normal database. When I say as a normal database, that means you can create users. You can create table spaces. You can create tables and these data or all these objects that you have created. This will be completely separate from your primary server. So in a logical standby, there are two components or all the objects can be divided into two parts. The first part is the primary. So these objects which are exactly same as primary, the LSP will only modify the primary part. As a DBA, if you create your own tables, your own table spaces, users and other stuff, this part is not touched by the LSP. LSP will not touch the user created data on a logical standby. Now this part can be used by a separate application. Let's take in your environment. There is an application. It needs an Oracle database of maybe 5 GB. So you can very much use your logical standby for this application by creating all the objects that are needed for that application and the same server is being used as a standby for the primary objects. The primary objects will only be modified by the LSP process. This is the biggest benefit and that's the reason most of the environments to save money. They do not go for active data guard. They would actually go for logical standby because you don't have to pay any license. It's better to go for logical standby. So now that you know benefits, you might be saying like, oh, Arun, it's so awesome. I'm going to use logical standby in my environment. So for that, there are a couple of stuff that you need to know. First of all, not all the objects are supported by logical standby. So you have a lot of issues with logical standby. So what are those issues? You have issues with the objects. Like not all the objects are supported by LSP. Let's take your LOB columns, the lob. 
B lob and C lob columns, they will not be supported by LSP. If your primary database has LOB columns, then gone. That means even if you are configuring the standby for LOB, you need to write separate scripts to extract those SQLs for LOBs and then rerun them on primary, which is an extra headache for a DBA. All right. Now, when it comes to objects, okay, LOBs and couple more objects are not supported. Also, inside your primary, you have so many schemas. There are a lot of schemas, internal schemas, which will not be supported by LSP. So we have issues with these schemas. When you are like on a primary server, you might have so many schemas, right? Then you need to run some commands to understand which schema your logical standby is not going to support. When we say not supporting, that means let's take we have HR user or HR schema. In the HR schema, we have a couple of tables that are not supported by LSP. Because of this, what will happen is it will mark HR as unsupported. So any changes that is made in primary on the HR schema, it will not be copied or replicated or applied onto the logical standby. So there is issue with the schemas. So issue with the objects, issue with the schemas and also there are a lot of other internal issues. The biggest one is DBA. So as a DBA, if you have a logical standby in the environment, I can guarantee that 80% of your time will go in managing the logical standby because it is applying the SQLs and that is where the biggest problem lies in. So if you are lucky to work in a logical standby environment, trust me, you will always have a lot of issues like every every hour or sometimes every three hours you will get some or the other issue with the logical standby until unless your primary is a very simple database. Like there are no complex objects, there are no complex schemas then logical standby is awesome but for a real hardcore production database logical standby is a big question mark you have to take a call based on again you have to talk to your client because if active data guard is affordable and if you are using logical standby as a replacement of active data guard i will not suggest this so if you are in a situation, then always try to propose your client active data guard. All right. Any questions on this, guys, before we move on? Yeah. Uh, so what is the normal uh, industry usage of this particular data card, which is normally used as a standby? Which type of uh, data card Physical is standby. normally used? Physical standby. And if the client is having little more budget, they will go for active data guard. Okay, so we have a question from Ken. Let me just look at this question. What is the advantage of converting the SQL before applying them to the logical standby? There is no advantage of it. And that's how it runs. You need to understand from the architecture perspective. Okay, so it's an open database. When we say open, that means it is in read write mode. When you are working with active data guard it is just open read right okay it is not right there is no write mode in the active data guard so if your database is in read write mode that means writing is enabled the writing is allowed only via sqls guys understand the architecture okay if let's take you want to perform a recovery you want to apply redo and perform a recovery. Let's go back to our Armen recovery scenarios. Recovery is done only in mount mode. All right. Or max, like in Active Data Guard, in open read mode. So if you want to apply redo, the database must be in mount or open read mode only. But with the logical standby, you are opening the database. It has a completely new different identity. The database is acting like a normal database because it's in open read write mode. In, in an open database, if you want to perform a recovery, the only way is by re-executing the SQLs. So whatever transactions are being executed on the primary server, 
they need to be re-executed in the same way on an open db and that's how it works